Hi guys, this is Rashid and welcome back. So today I would like to show you how we can use our AT card basic platform with the teleoperating. The terms teleoperating is not just you're controlling the robot in the same network. Like for example, if you are ROS developers, I think you know that you can control the robot by the RQT robot steering. So you can send the command velocity from your laptop to move the robot. But today it's not this kind of teleoperating. So this time we're going to control the robot over the network. So for example, your robot is in the Japan, but you are in the US. So you can control the robot over the countries to move the robot in Japan. This kind of application is very useful, for example, in Japan, where you can use this robot to go check in the hospital to see the patient in the room, but the doctors who's operating the robot is somewhere else. And another application is the patrolling robot. If you are away from your house or your office, so you can control the robot from another country to see the security in the house or in the room, and you can check the situation in that place. So if you are ready, let's get started. Here we are, this is our AT card basic assemble raw set. You might have seen this before, but if you don't, please check it out on attractlab-shop.com. I will put the link in the description below. For today's application, I think we need to inject the steroid to this guy to have a fully patrolling functions. So let's do it. And here we are after the modification. This is what we got. So this little black guy here is the YD LiDAR 3D30. It's a laser scan for the 2D. So I can see the obstacle in the front and on the left side and on the right side. And in the front here, we have the headlight with an LED that we can control by the JMOAB by sending the relay on off. And of course, we need a camera for the video streaming to see what the robot is seeing. And I'm putting the aluminum pole here for the 4G LTE mobile router. So inside of this box is pretty much the same as the AT card basic, but I'm going to explain to you again. So basically what is inside here is the Jetson Nano and the JMOA, which is used to control the AT card motors and control the relay. And we have a USB for the webcam and a YD LiDAR DT30. So this uh, ethernet cable is connecting to the 4G LTE mobile router, which I place it on top here. So we have another local Wi-Fi router, but for today, I'm not going to use it. And there is a five volt DC-DC converter to convert the uh, six cell LiPo battery into the five volt for the Jetson Nano. So basically inside the package, we're not going to include the six cell lipo battery so you will need to find it on your local battery shop okay guys before we do it on the real robot let me have some brief explanation about what's going to happen so if you have two ROS computers that you want it to be able to communicate together you have to set those two on the same network but in our application we cannot do that because we're going to Today, operate the robot over the network. So the first solution to this problem is to set up the VPN server client. So for example, on your AWS EC2 instance, where you can have the uh, console and web page in there, you can set up the um, VPN server, which has the IP of 10.1.10.1. .1 and on your robot, you can also set the VPN clients with the IP of 10.1.10.2. That means these two computers can see the ROS topics. So the ROS topic that are live in the AWS EC2 instance here, you can convert that and display it on the HTML. Your user computer can access the domain name of this AWS EC2 by the uh, web browser, then you can see the data. But from my experience, using the VPN for this is not a really good idea because it's really, really slow. So I am pretty much don't recommend you to do it in this way. So the better solution to overcome this issue is to use some middleware that can transport your ROS topic data from one computer to another computer. And that middleware is called Senor. If you haven't heard about Senor, I pretty much you to check on um, senor.io. There's a pretty good documentation explain about what is it and what is a Senor. So, but for briefly, so if you have two holes that the network behind that, then you can set up the Senor router in the cloud and then you can use the Sino bridge to convert your ROS2 data. And then it will send pass through this to the Sino router. And then 
your ROS topic will be alive on another side of the host here. So my overall system will look like this. So there is an AT card basic, that's just a nano, and this is our robot that I just showed to you before. And there is a Linode VM here, which running the Sino router in the cloud. And also there is AWS EC2 instance that hosting my web application. So you guys might have asked that why don't you just combine this Linode VM with the EC2 instance into one VM. So and the answer is I have tried that before, but I couldn't set the Sinor to run on the AWS for some reason because maybe um, the AWS, there is uh, two IP, one for the public IP and one is the private IP. But for the Linode VM, um, there is only one public IP here. Then I can uh, run the Sino router without any problem. So on the AWS side here, I'm pretty much um, get used to it with the uh, web development. So I pretty much prefer to run the my web application in here. And the fourth component here is the user computer, uh, which can be any computer with the browser. Uh, let's back to the first component is our AT card basic. So there is the AT card basic from the JMO App ROS 2 uh, package, which come with the robot and the YD LiDAR launch. This is from the YD LiDAR ROS 2 driver package. It's going to start the LiDAR and then we can get the scan topic. So the AT card basic here is going to publish then subscribe on the JMOAP namespace topic. So this is our application level code, the AT card basic handler. So on the right side here, there is the Sino bridge that going to convert ROS to data and then it's going to send to the Sino routers to the AWS EC2 here. So the C capture has also come from Sinor. So I got the code from the Sinor demos repository here. So it's inside the computer vision, CCAM and CCAM Python and ccapture.py. So the code is pretty much straightforward. It's just uh, open the camera and then grab the frame and then it just send the frame as the JPEG to the Sinor driver. Uh, IP here. So about the Sino router, you need to um, download the binary file, the Sino D from this repository, and then you just run it with some configuration file. If you check on the documentation that's explained in here, it can set up and run pretty much quickly. So about AWS EC2 instance here, this is what our web console is going to be there. So I have made the ROS2 popsup.js here, which is going to get the data from a Sino router and then convert the data into the JavaScript. So we can display it in the HTML. And the user computer, it just access the URL of this AWS instance. And then it should be able to see the, this web console. So this is a pretty much simple web console that I just made. So on the left upper here, it's just a telemetry data. You can see the warning if the LiDAR detects some human or obstacle is clear. It just uh, going to show it in here. And the card mode, because the AT card basic can have three card mode, which is the whole, manual, and auto. So in auto mode, it's going to be ROS, which we can control by sending the command velocity from this two joystick. So next is the video streaming, which come from the C capture. And uh, on the right side upper here is the buttons that we can choose the mode, and then it's going to reflect the mode in here. Also, we can set up the velocity limit. Then we can turn on off relay to control the headlights. And on the bottom here, you will see there are two joysticks because I'm planning to uh, make it work on the iPad or the touch screen as well. So left joystick would be the throttle or the linear velocity and the right joystick would be the steering or the angular velocity. But in case of the desktop device, um, you can just use any of this. And on the middle bottom here, you will see the laser scan where 
uh, the obstacle is surrounding the robots or not. So you can navigate the robot easily. Even your video streaming cannot see the left side or the right side. And you can have some guess about how the environment around the robot by the laser scan. Okay guys, I don't want to make the video too long. So, so this is the first part of the ROS teleoperating robot. For the next video, we're going to move to the robot and do some demonstration. So if you like this kind of video, please press like or share button and see you on the next video.